Thank you very much, and I'm happy to be your miss today. Good afternoon, everyone, and I hope everyone is doing great. So, uh, my name is uh, Ulu Bumi Ladipo, but you can call me Bumi, and it means the gift of God. I'm a Master of Divinity student at Columbia Theological Seminary, and my research work for this year, Mogos Forum from the Michael Morgan uh, Collection and Archives is on the Geneva Bible 1578 edition. Um, so uh, the Geneva Bible, uh, this is the particular copy from the Peace Theology Library Special Collection. So it's commonly referred to as the British Bible because of its translation of Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 which says uh, they made themselves breeches instead of coverings or uh, aprons. And as you can see, um, you can see this is the popular Dua Sata, the Psalms, and this, the, um, this is the spine, and that's the cover. I think that cover is rebound. So um, moving to the next slide, the Geneva Bible, 1578 edition contains the Old and the New Testament. It contains the Old and the New Testament, and uh, it's imprinted in London by Christopher Barker in 1578. That will be the first uh, large folio Bible edition. So the Geneva Bible containing the Old and New Testament translated according to the Hebrew and Greek languages. That means it is a complete translation. And when you look at the when you look at the cover, you will see the cover page for the Old Testament. You see the coat of arms there, and there's an imprint on that. That's an old French word. Uh, I think it's uh, pardon my French. Uh, you know, honisua oui mali a pas. This is an old French that translates to shame on him who thinks evil or ill of it. So it's an honorable venture. And uh, then when you look at it, you discover that that particular motto is part of the royal coat of arms of the United Kingdom, appearing on the gutter surrounding the shield, and it denotes nobility. So when you look at the uh, Old and New Testament, you the cover, you see the picture of flanked on the two sides, you see the picture of a woman on the right side and another woman on the left side. One is carrying a sword uh, and scale. One is carrying a book and this um, and the particular harp called sprig um, hatties that denotes Trinity, the Holy Trinity. It also means peace of mind. That means if anyone reads this Bible, that person is going to have peace of mind, and that person is going to uh, like have the support of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So, um, of course, the book represents the word of God, and um, the uh, two female figures represent justice and mercy or truth. So when you look at the, uh, below the cover page, you see the, um, you see this Joshua chapter one verse eight is written there, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of their mouth. There you see this uh, inscription CB. CB represents Christopher Barker, the printer to the Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth I. Then on the woodcut, you also see the CB, and uh, flanking the woodcut, you see the picture of the dragon and um, uh, the lion representing uh, Wales and England. So now, the provenance. Provenance is the history of ownership of a valued uh, object or work of art or literature. So this Geneva Bible 1578 edition was imprinted and published in London by Christopher Barker. He was born in Yorkshire, England, United Kingdom in 1529 and died in 1599. G Christopher Barker started his career as a Bible printer in, in 1576 and in 1577 he purchased from Sam Thomas Wykes, clerk of the Privy Council, an extensive patent which included the old and New Testament in English with or without notes of any translation. He paid the sum of 3,000 pounds to obtain the exclusive privilege to print the Geneva Bible in England with the support of Queen Elizabeth I. 
he acquired the title printer to her majesty then when you look at uh, when you, you flip open the bible uh, this particular copy here at the peace theology you will see uh, a letter written by a John Moret. The handwriting was not really, with, so I couldn't really say whether it's John Moret or John Mosset, but I think it's more of Moret. And that letter was written, uh, it, the letter reads like, to my loving cousin, I send you many thanks for your health, that you are in good health at present. So uh, it was written to Richard Wood, who happened to be uh, his cousin and his friend. And on research, we discovered that Richard Wood was a Welsh politician who sat in the House of Commons from 1646 to 1648. And he was also born in Yorkshire, England, uh, just the same place where Christopher Barker was born. So when you look at the, uh, when you look at this, the left, uh, one of the inscriptions uh, on that Bible, you will see Sotiran, Sacksville Street, London. Um, and you see Michael Mo um, the name of Morgan there. So I believe that Michael Morgan would have purchased this uh, Bible, this particular copy from, uh, from that uh, publisher, um, from that uh, bookseller. Because on research, we found out that there's a Harry Sotera who was one of the most prestigious and long standing antiquarian booksellers and had been in business since 1761. His store is one of the oldest antiquarian stores, uh, bookstores in the world, specializing in rare books and manuscripts. So Michael Morgan could have acquired this copy from his bookstore. Uh, the last owner, of course, is Michael Morgan, who was born in 1948 and died in 2022. Um, historical and cultural significance. We cannot talk about the Geneva Bible of 1548 without talking about Christopher Barker because he was uh, pivotal to the wide distribution of this Bible. Uh, this is his uh, device. We call it his device. That's the mark of the printer. And you see uh, so many things imprinted. You see the head of a boa and you see a scroll. Um, you see a scroll in the mouth of the bois and, um, and some Latin words written there. A rough translation might be the tiger, wicked creature of the old Eda, by the gospel made a song, is made a love. So Christopher Barker's uh, legacy was pivotal to the spread of Protestant beliefs and churches in England. He was also instrumental to the standardization of the English Bible uh, he was also one of the most successful and respected printers in England who had a lasting impact on English religious and cultural life through his role in making the Bible more accessible to the public through the wide distribution of the Geneva Bible and his official recognition by uh, the Queen, this Queen Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth I. The title of the Queen's printer was both a recognition of his skill and a strategic move by the Crown to ensure the accuracy of the printing of religious and official texts and royal supervision. Christopher Barker was responsible for printing other legal documents apart from the Bible. His work shaped the cultural and religious landscape of his time. Now, uh, a general history of the Geneva Bible before we go back to the 1578 edition because without the first edition, we will not have this. Um, the Geneva Bible was the primary Bible of the 16th century English Protestantism. The Geneva Bible was first pr printed in 1560 in Geneva, Switzerland by the Protestants and reformers who fled the persecution from the Roman Catholic Queen of England, commonly referred to as Bloody Mary. After King Henry VIII died, the King of England then, and his son, uh, Edward, Queen Mary ascended the throne and brought the nation back to Roman Catholic Church. She persecuted and killed the most prote uh, prominent Protestant leaders. Uh, she killed um, uh, 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 Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Thomas Kramer, and this made many people to flee uh, England to uh, the continent of Europe. So years later, when Mary became the queen, because she was, she loathed the reformers because Archbishop of Canterbury approved the divorce between 
King Henry VIII, and uh, her mother, Catherine. So there were t uh, two divorces that actually happened, divorce from uh, the queen, Catherine, and divorce from the Catholic Church. So King Henry VIII uh, instituted the Church of England. So you can see that this Geneva Bible is the first family Bible of the refugees while in exile. In fact, it was it's normally referred to as uh, in Calvin's time, Geneva is referred to as uh, the store of heavenly learning and discipline, the place where God has appointed us to do it. Because right there in Geneva, John Calvin, John Knox, and so many other reformers, they were there busy transforming the city. So it was the family Bible of the refugees while in exile. It is the Bible of reformation and freedom. The Geneva Bible was the first Bible taken to America, brought over on the Mayflower. It is the Bible upon which early American government was founded. The front piece of the 1560 edition, of course, inspired the design of the Great Seal, uh, that uh, Benjamin Franklin's design of the Great Seal of the United States. Remember, Benjamin Franklin was one of the founding fathers of America. It was used by William Shakespeare, Oliver Cromwell, John North, John Carvey, and other reformers of the time. It was the first Bible uh, to include many features, including uh, commentary. The, now, this Geneva Bible mostly is referred to as the British Bible because of its translation of Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, uh, which says, and they made themselves breaches instead of coverings. You can see it underlined here. So that, that's, that's, what's, that's what made them to be calling it uh, the British Bible. So this particular Bible was uh, the, the uh, those who translated it were William uh, Whittingham, who translated the New Testament in 1557, Anthony Gibby, Thomas Sampson, John Knox, John Carvey, and several others. As you can see, you can see the features, you see the commentaries, annotations, you see the chapter divisions, you see the chapter summaries, they, they, they refer to it as the argument, but actually the summary of whatever you are going to read in the book. Um, so one other feature, some other features of the Geneva Bible is the, is the first English Bible to use vast numbers and chapter divisions like I've shown you. It was assess accessible to everyone, it was aff affordable. Uh, it was the first Bible with a legible front and a reasonable size. The first with at least to show what words were not in the original languages, and the first to include maps. To include maps is not just for display in churches, it's for family reading. It's not only the priest that could interpret the Bible. Now that Bible is accessible to all. Everyone can have access, everyone can read, everyone can reference, everyone can understand the Bible. So it's the Bible of the people and it was a book suitable for everyone. And it was produced more than 50 years before the King James Bible. And it remained the most popular English Bible among the people until decades after the introduction of the King James Bible. But then King James banned the printer of the Geneva Bible in 1660, and the ban remained in place until, until his death in 1625. Now, the key features uh, characteristics of the Geneva Bible 1578 edition. So a copy of this edition, you can see, can be found um, in this, uh, uh, can be found in this location, uh, the special collection room at the Peace Theology Library. It is part of Michael Morgan's collections. This is the first, the, the uh, interesting thing about this 1578 edition is that is the first who pit size folio edition of the Geneva Bible. That's the first, you know, it's a large size. It's nearly twice the size of all other Geneva Bibles. And they measure approximately 30 inches. Uh, it was produced during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, who favored and supported the Protestants. And it was imprinted in London by Christopher Barker, uh, who had the exclusive privilege to print the Bible in English. Uh, so when you look at it, uh, you see, uh, so many, um, you see a letter of dedication is addressed to Queen Elizabeth I. When you flip it open, a letter of dedication is addressed to Queen Elizabeth I. She was being depicted as Zerubbabel. That is, she has started a noble tax 
the letter is one of encouragement that God is with her in this noble cause of supporting the reformers. It, it is also an acknowledgement of her dedication and a prayer for her success after the order of Zerubbabel. So the Geneva and the prayer book versions of the Sata appear side by side, uh, the former Roman type and the latter in black letter. There's a prologue uh, made to uh, Thomas Kramer, the Archbishop of Canterbury. The 15th century Geneva Bible also included the Apocrypha. Uh, is a collection of books considered canonical by some Christian traditions, but not by others. So these books, uh, according to the Geneva writers, the Geneva translators, they are supposed to be for further readings. They are not part of the canonized uh, book. So uh, it's, uh, it comes between the um, Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, we have a table for the order of the Psalms to be said at morning and evening. You can see that in the next slide. Uh, we see the holy days. The holy days are li highlighted. There's an almanac or calendar. You know, see so many holy days are highlighted. There's a calendar from 1578 to 1610. Many years showing activities for the days, the months, and the years. In fact, this is a highly organized study Bible um, that everyone has access to. And uh, showing this, uh, the significant days in church history and their, uh, and their impartation in the, in the world. Of course, it contains the Book of Common Prayer. You know, the Book of Common Prayer has um, uh, so many things, prayer, different kinds of prayers for different events, and then the administration of the sacraments. So when you have this particular edition, you have access to the Book of Common Prayer. Then we have devotionals, Bible passages, and scriptures for study at different seasons. They are also included. And um, of course, it has the Old and the New Testament. The Old Testament cover page has Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, as admonition to the reader. And of course, the New Testament has Proverbs chapter 30, from verse 5 to 6, as admonition to the readers. And of course, there's a letter to the readers, to letter of encouragement to encourage the spiritual growth of the readers. Now, what makes this particular 1578 edition unique is spiritual growth of the readers. You know, you don't need to depend on the priest again. You don't need to depend on the church leader again. Every family, every child has access to the word of God. There's wide distribution, everything you need. Prayers in the evening, prayers will be said in the morning, prayers will be said during Easter, during Christmas. Everything is there. You can actually be your own priest or your own prophet, like they will say in my own church. It is designed for private devotions and prayers. Easy to read, comprehensive notes, and commentaries for understanding the scriptures. Of course, we have knowledge of holy days and their significances. There are so many uh, Christians, they don't even know the holy days. They don't know uh, the special Sundays, maybe Sunday after accession, Sunday, you know, uh, Pentecost, uh, the day of Pentecost. They don't have access to that. But when you get the copy of the 1578 edition of the Geneva Bible, you have everything there. Everything about church history, administration of the church, everything is there. So the Book of Common Prayers and the Satas, they are side by side for comparison. You can compare them. There's one in, uh, in the black face. There's one in the Roman type, which you can use to compare. Like th there are some places in Psalm 8 uh, that's read that I, I can't remember the verse now. Where that's Psalm 8 verse 4 that says that um, thou hast made me lower than the angels. And another place, thou hast made me lower than the gods. So you can actually make comparison. And you discover that uh, Geneva Bible uh, 1578 edition is the one that even encourage uh, us to have study Bibles today, all the commentaries that we are having today, Harper Collins commentaries that we use today, this is the foundation. Now, there are some controversies surrounding the Geneva Bible. And um, the number one controversy is this translation to breaches instead of coat of skin or instead of uh, apron. There's an argument about the word breaches as it meant goes for men, and it contradicts Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The scripture says, thou shalt not, a woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. So 
the people, the uh, the opposition felt breaches are for men. So why would they sow themselves breaches? That means uh, Adam and Eve sold breeches and Eve is wearing something that pertains to a man. So because of that, they said they were not comfortable with it, that translation wise is wrong. Um, and of course we have the anti-Catholic commentaries. Remember the state of England uh, was back to, uh, during uh, Bloody Mary's uh, ascension to the throne, the, it was back to uh, Roman Catholic rule. You know, during that time, uh, there were so many anti-Catholic uh, commentaries in the marginal notes. And King James, of course, believed the Geneva Bible was anti-government, and this was considered a treason. So several of the marginal notes uh, spoke very fiercely about the right of subjects to resist their king. He called the annotations as untrue, partial, uh, territorial conceit, and King James was not happy with this, especially in Exodus chapter 1, verse 19. The notes concerning the midwives who did not follow Pharaoh's command to kill the male son, uh, the newborn boys of Israel. And I quote, their disobedience was lawful, but their dissembly was evil, unquote. And in verse 22, quote, when tyrants cannot prevail by craft, they are bust for them into outrage. So the Geneva Bible marginal notes infuriated King James. In fact, they were against tyranny and did not support the divine right of kings. So King James worried about his overall control over the state and the church, and due to his insecurity about his rulership and control of the kingdom, he commissioned a new translation. He commissioned a new translation, the King James Bible, first published in 1611. King James banned the printing of the Geneva Bible in 1616 until his death in 1625. Here is what the Geneva Bible of 1560 and subsequent editions, including this 1578 edition, said about Phil. I quote, the more the tyranny of the wicked rage against his church, the more his heavy judgment increased against them. The Pharaoh and his army were drowned in the sea, which gave an entry and passage to the children of God. I close the quote. The Geneva Bible even says, when dealing with tyrants, disobedience was lawful. Disobedience to tyrants was obedience to God. The men of Geneva included many study notes on the all the hard places because errors, sects, and heresies grow daily for lack of the knowledge of true, word, true knowledge of God's word. In conclusion, in conclusion, the Geneva Bible is a story of persecution. It's the story of America. It's the story of reformation. It's the story of freedom. It's the story of deliverance. That is why this country is founded, established, is, it, it is established as a city on a hill that other countries will look at as good examples. So the Geneva Bible is the story of biblical translation and effects in the world. The 1578 edition of the Geneva Bible represents a continuation of the widespread popularity and influence of this translation among English-speaking Protestants. It remained a vital religious text, shaping the religious and cultural landscape of the time. The 1578 edition of the Geneva Bible is preserved in the Michael Morgan Special Collections and Archives at the Peace Theology Library. Thank you for listening. God bless you.